BioBalance HealthCast episode 178, Thyroid and Heart Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week we're going to be talking about uh, thyroid and heart disease and the connections or combinations that where monitoring your thyroid can help save you or help you repair from heart disease if you've already had it. Well, everybody thinks that thyroid, high thyroid or elevated thyroid mm-hmm. is a, a risk factor for heart disease when in fact it's low thyroid that is a risk factor for heart disease. Okay. So having said that, then I'm going to tell you about the thyroid again. Okay, but, but they have the, the terms high thyroid is hyper hyperthyroidism, mm-hmm. and that is what everybody's afraid of, but they ought to be afraid of the sleeper, which is right. hypothyroidism. That's right. And why should they be afraid of the sleeper? Because, well, let me tell you what the thyroid does, because right. thyroid stimulates your metabolism. It strengthens your muscles so that your muscles work better. It causes you to, it helps you lose weight, takes away swelling, and it increases heart rate, but not too high if you have a normal level of thyroid. If you have a low thyroid, you lose your hair, you lose your outside eyebrows, you gain weight, your heart rate gets very slow, and your blood pressure can go high or very low but n- not normal. Okay. You also get swelling in your feet and hands, and your hands are cold all the time, or you're cold all the time. So basically the thyroid is in your neck right here. It's a little tiny, it's a little gland that does a lot of things. I call it the furnace. It keeps your body temperature warm, mm-hmm. and all of our functions in and, our and body it, works better when we're warm. It does that. It's not actually a thermostat that you turn up and down, it sends little chemical messengers mm-hmm. to different parts of the body. Right. And your heart works chemically and electrically. That's right. And so the chemical messengers from the thyroid tell the heart to be more, to be harder. What, what to be stronger, to actually beat at a normal rate, which is between 60 and 80. So that's a normal rate for getting blood all over your body, all through your body. You, mm-hmm. It's like a pump. If you have a pool or a, if you know anything about pumps, the pump has to be strong enough to get the water to the pool and, and then suck it back into the pump, and, and it's a closed system. So is your heart. Your heart's a pump, and it has to be strong enough, and it has to pump just enough, not too, not too few pumps, not too many, so you have to be able to fill the whole pump up, and then as it closes, it pushes blood out to your your whole body, just like it went into a pool. So, so, so the objective is to maintain a steady and consistent blood flow to all parts of the body. Absolutely, that's exa- yeah. So, you said, so it, you said it much better than I it, did. It doesn't fluctuate up and down. Right. Because it's it's beating irregularly or not beating strongly enough. Right. So you want a consistent flow. A cons- yeah, a consistent. And, and so then if you exercise right. and you increase your heart, heart rate, rate, which is what they say to do to lose weight, how does your thyroid play into that? Does it send it signals to say, hey, speed up? Or does it right. then send signals to say, okay, we're done now, we're resting, slow back down? It does speed up your metabolism. And, and the reason is your body needs more oxygen and more blood when you're exercising. So it speeds the heart rate and it also increases the ejection fraction, meaning how much blood goes out of your heart with each beat. That's a- Rejection fraction? Ejection. Ejection. So that's that's a matter of how much blood is being pushed out of your heart so that you can then oxygenate all your tissue. You were telling me before we started that everybody's afraid of an arrhythmia Mm -hmm. and that what they need to be afraid of is a low functioning heart uh, or hypothyroidism. Right. Come back and explain to me how, how the heart gets damaged when there's a low-functioning thyroid. Okay, well, first, there's there's four kinds of damage that your heart can under, undergo. Mm-hmm. An arrhythmia, okay, we talked about that. An arrhythmia can, means a cadence or the heart doesn't function so that you can fill up the atrium and then the ventricle and then effectively push blood out of the heart. A fast arrhythmia or just an uncoordinated action of the heart can actually, that's that's a heart 
abnormality that can cause damage to the heart eventually. Okay. And it also causes damage to the body by not giving enough oxygen to the body. So it can be an emergent situation. So that's one. The second kind of damage that we get to the heart is what we always think of with cholesterol and plaque. That's a damage from gathering fat with inflammation and coating the arteries that lead to the heart. So like sludge inside the Sludge inside pipe. of it and narrowing mm -hmm. the, um, the volume that can go through there right. to feed the heart. So we're actually pumping blood out of the heart to the lungs and then back to the heart to feed the heart as well as the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. So if you have really narrowed vessels, then the heart muscle at the, at the very end of that vessel is going to die because you can't get enough blood flow to that. And a heart attack is when you have those vessels completely occluded. Mm -hmm. So they just are blocked. Right. Then at the end, it's kind of like at the end of that, you, you kink the hose off. Right. At the end of the hose, there's no water coming out. So in the heart, there's no blood and oxygen coming out. So that so the part of the muscle dies. Of the muscle dies. So that's a heart attack. That can cause damage where the heart just stops beating. It also can ca cause long-term damage where that muscle's dead, and therefore the the heart is is pumping without that part of the muscle. Right. And if you have multiple uh, clots, mm -hmm. then lots of the parts of this nice muscle that's pumped ever since we were the you know we were conceived, then that that pump is bad. So right. the muscle has areas that won't push blood out. So then we get no ejection fraction. Our ejection fraction becomes very low. We can't get enough blood to our body or to the heart to be really healthy and effective. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there is the last, one of the last damages is just a poor muscle. Now you don't have to have a heart attack to get a poor muscle. You can actually have a virus that will attack the, the muscle and then the whole heart will not pump well, okay? So poor pump, a poor pump is basically what we come down to in all of these, but hypothyroidism acts a lot like what the viruses do, only the viral um, damage is, is usually forever, and the damage that's done by uh, thyroid is usually reversible most of okay. the time. So if your thyroid's low, it affects the heart by making it not be a effective pump or a strong muscle it makes it lax and it slows the uh, pulse. So the pulse is slow with a lax muscle means that nothing in your body is getting quite enough blood. Right. It also makes you tired. You get really, so that, that, why that, your hands that's get one cold? of, if you get cold and you get tired mm -hmm. and you get out of breath, oftentimes that is hypothyroidism plus uh, a, a, an ineffective heart. So those two things are the heart and the thyroid together. Right. So how do you know if you have hypothyroidism, right? Right. So we, we don't always sit there and think about our heart and it takes tests to look at our heart and just determine whether our heart is abnormal, abnormally beating. Usually we find out when it's a big disaster. So you want to know if your thyroid is low to begin with. So the signs are that you, you lose hair on your head, the outside of your eyebrows. Well, not that, <laughs> not that, not up here. That's, uh -huh. that's male pattern baldness and that has to do with dihydrotestosterone and not. Don't, don't get distracted. I won't. <laughs> that, that's my favorite subject though. Okay, so, so um, low thyroid, again, mm -hmm. is swelling of your hands, feet, even just swelling all over, constipation, Distended belly, usually just because your bowels don't work very well. Right. Skin's really dry and cool, and you feel cold all the time. Mm -hmm. Pulse is slow. Blood pressure is usually low or high because low thyroid can cause either one. Low thyroid causes the vessels to be stiffer, so sometimes that causes high blood pressure. Sometimes the pump is so bad it causes low blood pressure, so it could be either one. So basically people look really puffy swollen, and they can even have a goiter here, like a big a big mass here when the thyroid's not was working. I iodine issue. It can be. But it can also be a thyroid issue. Right. I did that, not it's, know that. Iodine okay. has, ha, is one of the things that, one of the parts of a thyroid molecule. Okay. You have to have iodine. So the wheels just start falling off, and you yeah. recognize 
they're wobbly or they're off, and that tells you it's a thyroid problem. Check the thyroid. Right. Check the thyroid. Okay. Now, now that's observational and anecdotal. I come in and tell you I'm cold all the time, mm -hmm. I'm short of breath, I'm tired, I have trouble going to the bathroom. Are there medical tests that you can run as well? Yes, but usually I can tell somebody has a low thyroid across the room. That's one of my favorite favorite because games. I used to play. I used to play with my daughter. I'd mm -hmm. be like, she's a doctor now. She, okay, look around the room. Tell me who has a low thyroid in here. I mean, it was fun. <laughs> I play the same games with my wife. We sit around and go, okay, who's crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably more fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so the testing is a blood test. Just basic screening to see if you have a low thyroid is mm -hmm. a blood test. So the blood test is thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. Okay. It's a hormone from the pituitary. So you're not, you're indirectly looking at the thyroid. The, the pituitary puts out a stimulating hormone that, that then through the bloodstream goes to your thyroid, stimulates the thyroid. And then when you get enough thyroid hormone, which is called T3 and T4, it circulates back and shuts down the stimulation that in a perfect system. If you have so low thyroid. So there's a thyroid, positive feedback system. Right. The, it, it leaves the pituitary gland, runs to the thyroid, builds up or turns mm -hmm. on whatever it's supposed to do. When it balances, it runs back up to the pituitary and says, okay, we've got it. Right. Okay. Now, malfunction is, some people, malfun their thyroid doesn't function and is low because they're, they've had a brain injury and they can't okay. stimulate their thyroid. Right. So that TSH is really low, and their thyroid is their thyroid hormones are really low. So you know if the TSH is low, that the thyroid is probably out of balance. Right, but okay. but it can be the combination has to be looked at. Right. If TSH is low and thyroid hormones low, that's a pituitary or a hypo or a brain problem. If they're both low. If they're both low, but if the TSH is high, and the thyroid hormone is low. Well, now there's two thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. Usually they're both low. Okay. Okay, so usually both of them are low, but if the thyroid hormone TSH is high and these are low, that means that the pituitary's pushing the thyroid right. to try to make hormone uh -huh. and it just keeps going up, up and up higher and higher because it's not getting any back to shut it off. The feedback system's not working. So that's what we look for when we look at blood work for hypothyroidism. Okay, I knew somebody one time that said that their doctors went in and killed their thyroid, so they <laughs> I then love had to stories. take thyroid medicine. <laughs> Is it, it, that's basically what happens. That's a treatment for hyperthyroid. Hyper, okay. Too, too active mm -hmm. a thyroid. That's often an autoimmune disease where you attack your own thyroid. And as it's being attacked, it hyper, it hyper, uh, it's hyperactive, right. makes too much thyroid hormone. In that case, you lose weight, you're jittery, your pulse is high, really high, mm -hmm. and you can't concentrate and you're, you just feel like you're buzzed all the time. You can't okay. sleep. So that is, you have to have your thyroid ablated is what that burning out Kill thing costs. Or, or, re or removed, or there may even be a mass in your thyroid that's causing this whole thing. Yeah. And sometimes they just take the mass out. Okay. So this is- But that's hyper. That's we, we were hyper, talking about hypo, sorry to distract you. And that does affect heart heart function in terms of, it just makes the heartbeat so fast, it can't it can't fill properly to get blood out. Right. So we, we treat that with medication. But we're gonna go back to hypothyroidism, because right. that's the one that everybody thinks has nothing to do with the heart. You know, they, they think, oh, we don't have to treat that. Well, if you don't treat it, then you're gonna get heart disease down the line. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat your thyroid, it's very important. So where were we? So we were at the testing. T4 and T3 are low, or one of them is low. Right. Generally, the thyroid is low, okay? Right. So we have to replace it. We don't stimulate it, we don't do anything like that. We just give the patient, you or me, thyroid medicine, and it's oral. You don't have to have it put under the skin like testosterone. And, it's and a what medication. Does it, re it replaces the T4 or the T3? Well, it depends on the thyroid or medication. The TSH. It, oh, the T4 or the T3. T4. We, T4. we okay. don't Not replace the TSH. the TSH. Okay. So the T4 is what Synthroid or Levoxyl or Levothyroxine is. That's all just T4. And then Cytomel or Lyothyronine. If you, if you're familiar with this, I and you've love when taken she talks these. Like that. <laughs> so T, that's T3. And what's the difference? 
T- I mean, at a cellular level. At a cellular level, T3 is a much more active hormone, and it actually is really stimulates the activity. Everything that the thyroid does, it actually gets it going faster. The downside of the t- just T3 therapy is that it can cause you to have too much or, or a hyper uh, thyroidism. So if you take too much, it's it's really rapid and it can cause you to have an arrhythmia. So we on that drug on that medication we slowly come up. So it's it's kind of like buying high octane gas and low octane gas. The high octane is the T3 right. makes mm-hmm. it work really efficiently. Mm-hmm. If you give it the low octane that's got T4, they've got an extra iodine molecule mm-hmm. they have to get rid of mm-hmm. for it to work. Right, because T3 is the active form. So basically, you have to make all of your T4 into T3. Now, some of us, like me, genetically don't have that enzyme. Right. So every woman in my family from an early age has low thyroid because we can't make our T4 into the active form. So you would just respond to T3 only? Right, or a combination thereof. You have to have a little T4 for other things. I okay. mean, it's it's better to be balanced, just like mm-hmm. you, we were intended to be. I try to get everybody back to like w- the way God made us. So some T4 and enough T3 to keep everything active. So when I have somebody like that, and most women tend to lose the ability to, to um, make T3 out of T4 when they're stressed. And I don't know any women who aren't stressed. So in general, I, I try to give them both. I give them T4 and T3 together in one pill, which is more efficient, called Armour Thyroid. And it's pig thyroid. Right. That's what we use. And it's very effective. Most women do great on it. But I've used Synthroid on women, and I've used Armour Thyroid on men. So I can switch back and forth to make the fit proper. Well, talking about men and women, I still have a question about this because it throughout all our podcasts, for anybody that watches them regularly, there's there's always a question like when you do a blood test to measure T4, T3, TSH. The normals for men and women are different. The normals for men and women have been different for 20 years when since they did when they did a huge study and they determined that Women's TSH, okay, remember TSH, when it goes up, Mm -hmm. that means low thyroid. Women have a lower trigger for them to have low thyroid. So in other words, if a woman has a TSH that goes up to 2.5 or above, they have low thyroid. Okay. But a man, if a TSH has to go up to 4. For doctors to say, oh, his is low. To say his is low. All right. Now, most doctors don't accept that because... They, they just accept the status quo from 15 to 20 years ago, which was both of them are the same and it's too much trouble to think about it. And we'd be treating too many people, according to them. Just do the lab reports now show the difference or do they just show normal is four? Most lab reports just have the male normal. And the male normal came from, I mean, 1940-something mm-hmm. when they tested male medical students. All were at age 28, 29, I can't remember which, but... He- young, healthy males, no females were in the study again, gender, right. dif- gender um, bias. bias. Mm-hmm. So uh, when they did check the two sexes, they found that they were different. So, mm-hmm. so we're still depending on this 1940-something study that it has way lived way past its, its prime. So we should be looking at the gender difference in this. So a lot of women are under-treated. Their doctors say, your thyroid's normal. Their hair's falling out. Everything else their is hands are cold. They and and their heart they're getting heart problems and they're and they're they're not getting enough blood flow. They get out of breath when they work out. They're gaining weight. So they come to me and say, Well, what do you think? And I'm like, Well, let's look at your lab. Well, they fit the women's criteria, but just to go one step further, I go back 20, 25 years when we used to just test bio we used to just test uh, basal body temperatures. Right. And a basal body temperature First temperature in the morning before you get out of bed orally should be above 97.9 if you have a normal thyroid. That's the very lowest it should be. Well, many women are 96.9, 97.0, and, and that's that's a sign of hypothyroidism. Mm-hmm. So those people I treat as well. Oftentimes your blood test looks good, so sometimes but your the, thyroid... The simple old-fashioned... Is, is better. It's is, cheaper, too. Yeah. You have to pay for a test. I mean, right. I could just do that. Right. Yet, 
I'd like to have some to see if the lab test really works for that person or not. If it if we follow it. So you do like to, to get the lab test anyway, I like to I do both. If, if somebody comes in with a low basal body temperature and you give them thyroid, and then their temperature gets where you want it, then are you satisfied? Or do if, you if their other? symptoms go away? Okay. I have to have symptoms and the temperature, or symptoms and the lab get get better. Right. Because so there's the a lot of the day, hanging then the goal on is symptom reduction. Right. You know, that's right. It, and it's not about just treating a number. It's about treating the symptoms. The person. Right. And that, when all those symptoms get better, then I know that the heart's getting better. Okay. So they won't be out of breath when they work out. And their heart muscle is not getting lax. And, and it's kind of like an old pair of hose that you just keep wearing. And it just kind of doesn't for, fit form on your leg. It just kind of hangs. The muscle just gets kind of lax and it doesn't work very well. So, so to summarize, there are four or five symptoms that if I present to you with these symptoms, makes an alarm go off in your head to say low thyroid. And that mm -hmm. really needs to be attended to, p people fear the, the arrhythmia, which is hyperthyroid, but they really need to be more aware of the low thyroid because over time that leads to heart damage. That's right, and people who have a heart attack, when they have low thyroid, don't recover as well. There's several recent studies about that where if you, if you have hypothyroidism and it's not treated mm -hmm. and you have a heart attack, then it's very hard for your heart muscle to heal. And so you may not get back to your old vigorous self right. without the thyroid. So if you have these symptoms, and we'll run through them again just as we close, be sure that you talk to your physician about it and say, can you please check my thyroid? And do you know about the gender difference? And my basal body temperature is Hell, blank. Yes. And they should know that too. Right. Because that's, yeah. I mean, we still know about basal temperature. Go to the drugstore and buy a basal body thermometer. You just need a regular bed. one. Just put it under your tongue. It's not yeah. like with infertility. They had a special for thermometer. Yeah, I think did. that was a gag. God, I remember those. It was it, <laughs> terrible look <laughs> on your face. Yeah. But you, all you need is a under the tongue thermometer. Thermometer. That's it. And then you just just write it down because you won't remember it. Not you'll be one of those tired. electronic ones that you put in your ear. That's not as good. I would not rather just have an oral temperature. Okay. okay. Uh, and then that so, will help you know. So run through the, temp the symptoms one last time. Hair loss, eyebrow loss, dry skin, goiter, um, swelling, belly distension, constipation. Uh, in fact, loss, hair loss all over your body, usually. Um, cold hands and cold feet. Cold hands and feet. Or cold all the time. And, and you're warm. cold all the time. Yeah, and when she says eyebrow loss, she's talking about from out, the outside out, out in. Out here. So out by the side of your ear, <laughs> towards your nose, it begins to go away. So you just mm -hmm. get this little bitty piece of eyebrow left. That's right. Yours are growing right. in really nicely. Mine are coming in. <laughs> so thank you for listening, and come back next time. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.